What is going on, everybody? James Hancock here. I'm back to review the new animated film, Super Mario Brothers, which I saw at a midnight screening last night in Times Square here in New York. And if the very rowdy crowd that I saw it with is any indication, I think this movie is about to clean up and clean up big time over the next couple days, over this very long Easter weekend. I mean, is it even a weekend when it starts with a midnight screening on a Tuesday night? I mean, I'm all for it. I love midnight movies. I'm much more of a night person than a morning person. But it's just funny how people can try and pad their opening weekend numbers with every little trick in the book. But I should add that I'll be avoiding spoilers in this video, but I'll give you a warning toward the end before I go into a few specifics that I need to mention. But let me tell you a little bit about this screening because I went in to see the movie with relatively modest expectations. I'd seen some mixed reviews, but I figured whatever. But as soon as the trailer started for this movie, the crowd started losing their goddamn minds. I mean, they were screaming out lines by Mario from the games. I could just tell they were amped up. And then when the movie started, pretty much every line of dialogue, every action set piece, every introduction of every character, every little Easter egg from Nintendo that was tucked away in the movie prompted applause. I mean, the crowd was pretty much steadily clapping the entire goddamn movie. I was like, what the hell is going on here, like there was one person behind me who was clapping so incessantly, I had to shoot them a, uh, a mean, surly look at one point, but I could not believe the crowd response. And there were a lot of needle drops in the movie, and every time a, a new song began, there was this one person on my row who, in the most tone-deaf, out-of-key fashion imaginable, would sing along enthusiastically. And initially, I found it to be annoying as hell, but then a really funny thing happened toward the end of the movie. Suddenly, I was the one that was clapping, and I realized that I was feeling like pure, unbridled, innocent joy. And no matter what you think of the movie along the way, or its peaks and valleys, or the good scenes or the bad scenes, the ending of the movie, it sticks the landing in such satisfying fashion. I, I could have easily walked out of the theater and walked right back in and watched it for a second time. And what's funny is how I never really considered myself that much of a diehard Super Mario Brothers fan, but as I was watching the movie, I started thinking about all the games that I played from the early 80s through the late 90s on different platforms that are part of the Super Mario franchise. I mean, I've got a list right here. And starting in the early 80s with the stand-up arcade games, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and Mario Brothers. And then on the ColecoVision, Donkey Kong Jr. again. Then on the Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, uh, Super Mario Land on the Game Boy, and then back to Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES. Then I had a little upgrade on the Super Nintendo with Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, and Super Mario Kart. Holy shit, that was a fun game. Uh, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, and Donkey Kong Country. And then the last one that I played was Super Mario 64, but it's funny. If you were to ask me, what are your favorite Nintendo franchises, I would say, oh, Metroid, Legend of Zelda, Castlevania. Like, I would list off a lot of franchises ahead of Super Mario. However, any franchise where you've played more than 10 of the games, many of which you played to the completion, well, you got to be a fan on some level, whether you want to admit it or not. And so while it's been a quarter of a century, basically, since I played my last Mario game, I guess I'm an OG fan in denial because I was there from day one throughout the 80s and 90s and played a shitload of Super Mario Brothers, which is all a long-winded way of saying that a lot of the Easter eggs in the flick and a lot of the obscure characters and obscure references kind of touched me in a way that I was not anticipating. I think the thing I'm, I did not anticipate at all about this movie is how much heart it would have. I was expecting a lot of action. I was expecting world-class animation. But it was strangely like moving and engaging in the relationship between Mario and Luigi and their camaraderie with the other characters, like Princess Peach or Toad, and especially Donkey Kong himself, my original nemesis from the stand-up arcade era. I mean, I was like age six when I was trying to play that game back in the day. The average length of a game, like based on one quarter, I would last like 45, 60 seconds before all three people were dead and I'd be running back to my mom. I can have another quarter so I can keep playing. I mean, Donkey Kong, hard fucking game. Way harder than some of the, uh, the later games in the franchise. But as I was watching the movie, I started to form a hypothesis. And this hypothesis might be a little bit biased because I was surrounded by so many just Mario freaks and fanatics. But I think the animation studio Illumination, in conjunction with or in partnership with Nintendo... 
is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, already Universal has been threatening to kind of shove Disney aside when it comes to family-friendly entertainment, animation, but I'd never seen a single animated movie by Illumination. I knew they were you know, world-class on a technical level, but they were always tackling subjects that I regarded as a little bit um, too young and innocent for my kind of fucked up taste and sensibility. But Illumination has an amazing track record. They've been very successful. And they know how to deliver a tight, economical, entertaining, animated film for people of all ages. But Nintendo is sitting on this giant library of IP. And this all ties into a much larger thesis that I'm working on or hypothesis because it's starting to appear as if video game adaptations are going to dominate over the next couple of years in ways that the superhero genre used to. We've started to see some superhero movies underperform or outright flop. And we're starting to see a hell of a lot of video game adaptations, many of which are actually satisfying to watch. Like in the past, historically, we saw hundreds of adaptations that were just dreadful. They were just, they were just completely, totally unwatchable. But I've never seen the Sonic the Hedgehog flicks, but I know those movies have done well. But I thought The Last of Us was an excellent show. And there are tons of people who love the show Arcane. And I think if Super Mario Brothers outperforms, if, we, if you take the over, I think it's going to be a giant eye-opening moment for Hollywood where they realize that a great game or a great gaming franchise has global recognition, global love and affection. You don't have to educate people about what these characters are, or who they are, what the stories are. They already know. And it really felt like with this movie, they were doing their best to deliver a movie that would appeal to diehard Super Mario Brothers fans. And that's unusual. Usually Hollywood will take something that is loved by a niche audience and try and make it feel more mainstream. Like, look, look at what's being done at uh, Marvel right now as opposed to leaning into what made the comics distinctive in the 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. Instead, they're just taking the characters and turning them into kind of mainstream schlocky movies. But for me, anytime you're tackling a popular series of books, a popular video game series, a popular comic, whatever, you should try to appeal to the diehards first, make it distinctive, make it original, make it unique, and if you do a really good job, then the rest of the casuals will come along for the ride. Like, Last of Us. Last of Us was a very faithful adaptation of the game, and a lot of other people came along for the ride who had never played the game. And admittedly, it's been a hell of a long time since I've played a Super Mario Brothers game, so I don't know what the games are like these days, but as I was watching this flick, it really felt like everybody involved was trying to deliver a movie that the diehard fans would absolutely love. And if casual audience members are a little confused by all the various power-ups that Mario and Luigi and all the other characters can get from throwing fireballs to turning into raccoons, whatever the case may be, who cares? It's a pretty simple story, no matter what. We're not talking about Shakespeare and Hamlet and that sort of thing. We're talking about Super Mario Brothers and the filmmakers behind this movie, which includes directors Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelinek, and a screenplay by Matthew Fogel. They very clearly are trying to appeal to the millions of people who've been playing these games going all the way back 45 years at this point. And you would think that would be so obvious or that it would be standard operating procedure for all these big budget movies. But over the last six, seven years, we've seen so many examples that go in the opposite direction where a show or a movie will take something that used to be really popular or really cool and they'll try to kind of dress it up for modern audiences and will completely destroy it and also insult all the original fans along the way. So it was just a relief to see a Super Mario Brothers movie just letting it be a Super Mario Brothers movie. They're not trying to turn it into Star Wars. They're not trying to turn it into Marvel. They are letting the brand be the brand. Let the thing be the thing, and it's much more difficult to shoot yourself in the foot. In any case, let's dive into what makes this movie work. If you're unfamiliar with the story, it's pretty basic Mario and Luigi. They are aspiring plumbers working here in New York, and they get sucked into an alternate universe where the Mushroom Kingdom and the Koopas are about to go to war. Bowser's basically taking over one kingdom at a time, and the two big remaining kingdoms that have yet to fall are the ones led by Princess Peach, and the one led by the Donkey Kong family. And so Mario and Luigi, they have to team up with all these various factions, get them unified, and defeat Bowser. And a splendid time is had by all. And the good news is, if you don't like the movie, it's only 92 minutes long, but I love tight, economical feature films because if you love something, you don't have to, you don't have to bemoan the fact that it's too short. You can always watch it again. But as I mentioned before, I wasn't enjoying the movie on the same level or to the same degree as all the other maniacs in the theater last night. But there were some really cool details that I want to call attention to. And these are not spoilers, but just little things like side-scrolling sequences where suddenly the movie 
doesn't look like a video game, but it just changes the angle to that classic side-scrolling format where if you love the games on the NES or the SNES, it's going to feel very familiar. And they're used in relatively small doses, so they don't overstay their welcome. But another gaming mechanic that was used really well in the movie was the power-ups, as any player of these games can tell you. Whether it's throwing fireballs or getting big or flying around like a raccoon, the Mario Brothers games are full of power-ups. And in that Mario and Luigi don't have any powers or any actual skills apart from being plumbers, it immediately gave them some really cool weapons to take advantage of when going into combat against Bowser and all of his various minions and whatnot. And speaking of Bowser, Jack Black absolutely knocked him out of the park and he got to employ some of his various musical skills in very fun, surprising ways, especially if you're a fan of the original NES Super Mario Brothers. But the whole cast was pretty damn solid across the board, even Seth Rogen. And uh, Seth Rogen's one of those actors where I feel like he's been horribly overexposed and I kind of never want to hear his voice ever again. But even Seth Rogen couldn't pull this movie down because when Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong is either fighting and or teaming up with Chris Pratt as Mario, it's kind of magical. I mean, Donkey Kong and Mario, they've been antagonists for as long as I can remember. The original Donkey Kong game is Mario versus Donkey Kong, one level after another. They were put on this planet to fight each other. They're like He-Man and Skeletor, or Batman and the Joker. And they're not the focus of the movie because, after all, the movie is called Super Mario Brothers. This is a movie about Mario and Luigi, and nobody steals the, uh, the spotlight from the two of them. However, it was really cool seeing Mario and Donkey Kong teaming up and or fighting on so many occasions. But on the whole, I just really enjoyed the cast. Anya Taylor-Joy was fantastic as Princess Peach. Charlie Day was funny as hell as Luigi. He might be the funniest person in the movie. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key is really good as Toad. And I know there was a ton of debate out there in advance of the movie whether or not Chris Pratt could pull off Mario. I'm not going to claim to be some Mario connoisseur, but I thought Chris Pratt did great. And goddamn, Chris Pratt at this point, how many franchises does he have to his name? I mean, he's got Guardians of the Galaxy. He's got Terminal List. He's got the friggin' Lego movie. I mean, he's got so many fucking franchises. He's got the Jurassic World movies. And now he's got the Super Mario Brothers franchise. Long story short, he's going to be very busy in the years to come. But good God, when it comes to giant franchises featuring one actor, Chris Pratt might have more franchises to his name than any other actor alive. So just as a way of wrapping up this section before I move into my spoilers, I just want to say that with the resources of Universal, the combination of Illumination and Nintendo, they're going to be a fucking powerhouse in the years to come. And they could very easily eat Disney's lunch. And as somebody who doesn't like Disney... I'm all for it. I just feel like Universal and Illumination obviously have a proven track record when it comes to delivering family-friendly animation around the world. And Nintendo is sitting on this library of characters that people love, all of which are going to feel very fresh and very fun and very original in comparison to a lot of the stale brands that Disney is employing. I mean, who wants to see Disney do yet another live-action remake of another animated classics or... Would you like to see Illumination give us a kick-ass $200 million Legend of Zelda movie or a $200 million Castlevania movie? Actually, we already had a great Castlevania show at Netflix, but a great Metroid movie or whatever the case might be. The sky is the limit. And I'll be rooting for him. Like, like I said before, I did not enjoy Super Mario Brothers to the degree that the rest of the maniacs around me did. But when we got to the very end... I was nothing but smiles. So why was I nothing but smiles toward the very end? And I should give you a fair warning. I'm going into spoilers now. So if you don't want any spoilers, bail out. But there's a giant battle scene at the very end where they all accidentally get sucked into New York. And suddenly Mario and Luigi are fighting Bowser and his minions right in the heart of Brooklyn. And there's a moment where Luigi is protecting Mario for Bowser's flame. And then together they're chasing after one of those invincible stars that people are very familiar with. Going back to the game on, on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. But they're chasing after the star. The flames are closing in. And suddenly when the dust settles and the smoke clears, you see Mario and Luigi standing side by side, all sparkly and invincible. And I'm getting chills even talking about it. And I was like, oh my fucking God, like they nailed it. Like it was a giant heroic beat. I think that moment from this movie is going to rank among my favorite scenes that I see in any movie all year. And I know that sounds ridiculous for somebody who is much more drawn to kind of like hard R adult theme material. But the only way I can describe it is just pure unbridled joy, just great heroic storytelling. And Mario and Luigi, as they rush into battle, just little details like 
putting out the arms to their side as they run side by side, just like the characters used to back on the Super Nintendo. I feel like all those little details, some people are going to call them Easter eggs, but for me, they just reinforce the world and it makes it feel like an authentic Mario Brothers experience. And so for my money, there's no other scene in the entire movie that can hold a candle to that moment. However, a close second would be the Mario Kart sequence. And I played the shit out of Mario Kart back in the day. And it almost turns into like Mad Max Fury Road when Mario and Peach and Toad and they're all they're teaming up with the, the Donkey Kong army and they're all picking their vehicles and jacking up their stats and getting ready to ride off to war. And it was just fucking glorious. And Peach was just incredible. She has this little motorcycle where she looks cool as shit on it. And then what you proceed to see is this giant battle on this incredible rainbow racetrack as Bowser's minions are chasing them down with all these siege engines and vehicles of destruction. It was just so much goddamn fun. And I think that even for people who hate the movie, and there will be people who dislike this movie. There's nothing wrong with that. Let people like what they want to like and dislike what they want to dislike. But that, uh, that Mario Kart sequence, even if you've never played the game, holy shit, that was some really solid, entertaining filmmaking. But as far as box office predictions are concerned, I think this movie's going to gross well over $100 million over the next couple days. The word of mouth is going to carry the day, and Easter weekend, people are going to be looking for ways to entertain the little kids. And I feel like this is one of those rare movies where whether you're 5 or 85, I think everybody's going to have a pretty good time, no matter what their knowledge of this franchise is might be. Whether or not it'll lure in more people to play other Mario games, who the hell knows. But what's really cool about this upcoming weekend is seeing how we're going to have Dungeons and Dragons in its second weekend and John Wick Chapter 4 in its third, which means there actually is going to be variety and choice in the marketplace. Or if you want to put the kids to bed and go have a proper movie going experience that is geared specifically toward adults, you can go see the new movie Air directed by Ben Affleck. But this is the first time in years where I felt like we actually have a decent amount of healthy variety in the marketplace, and I'm all fucking for it. And I think there's a very real chance that Super Mario Brothers is going to completely, totally murder any box office hopes that Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves might have had. And I know there are a lot of people out there who really loved it, and there are parts of it that I really enjoyed, like The Paladin. That movie opened to less than $40 million on a $150 million budget. I don't know how well it's going to do overall. And it very well just might end up being a victim of circumstances where opening between John Wick Chapter 4 and Super Mario Brothers it might just get squeezed on either side into total oblivion. But I'm all for a little healthy competition because I feel like the best movies overall will win. But looking ahead to the future, it's a very exciting time for gamers who are also movie fans or movie fans who are also gamers. I just saw the, uh, yesterday that another Street Fighter's in the works, and obviously we have a TV show based on Fallout coming our way. And my prediction slash hope for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years is that we'll see a golden age of video game adaptations on the big and small screen that will match and or exceed the golden age of superhero adaptations that we saw over the last 20 years. But I feel like a lot of audience members are tired of superheroes. There'll, be, there'll always be the diehards who will show up to watch any superhero movie, but... I feel like there are a lot of movies that are craving different storytelling experiences, and there's so many different weird stories and genres in the world of video games that Hollywood could keep itself busy adapting games for a very long time, and as Super Mario Brothers does really, really well, and it appears as if it might, there's going to be an absolute stampede toward gaming properties. It'll be a, a fucking gold rush as Hollywood tries to create the next Super Mario Brothers box office sensation. But I think at this point, I've said all I have to say. I found the movie to be very entertaining. I will most likely see it again. I think there can be plenty of people out there who liked it a hell of a lot more than I did. I think there'll be plenty of people who liked it a hell of a lot less. But I think we've got a genuine box office hit on our hands. And uh, it is well deserved. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel hitting that notification bell but i hope everyone has a great week slash weekend but more importantly as always onwards and upwards